All right, so here we go. So this is on uh, planning for digital skills in the fall. And, and I want to uh, present my screen here um, because I did create a bit of a presentation and I don't wanna lose sight of it. Uh, this one I have a feeling is going to, I'm the most uncomfortable giving this presentation of all the ones that I've given uh, so far. And part of the reason is, is I don't want to come across as preachy or this is you know the one and only way uh, to do something essentially I want to give you some some ideas to think about and some of the some of the insights that I have gotten ever since we got into the COVID-19 situation of what I was seeing and so based on that uh, I'm going to try and point you in some directions and give you some resources and everything here so um, so this is this was my big this is the one big thing that I really found uh, is based on what I was hearing from teachers and some of the sessions that I was participating in where I was participating with teachers and with students and stuff like that as well, is even in some of our environments that we were very rich in technology usage, our students were not set up or our teachers didn't feel that our students were set up to work independently with technology. I have been in sessions where uh, on the other end, with the student, the mom was working the mouse and doing all of the computer work. And the student was essentially hands in her lap talking. Um, I've talked to teachers that have told me, you know, very similar things. I would say, well, why don't you do this with your kids? And they're like, well, my kids can't do that. My kids can't log in. My kids weren't ready. Uh, and kind of the idea, uh, in fact, with one of our schools, they said, you know, we generally don't introduce uh, computers and this is again focusing on our little guys but we generally don't introduce computers to our kids until kind of after Easter type thing because we want to focus on reading and writing and rightly so unfortunately this you know once in a lifetime moment or whatever it was really bit us in the butt there because we have all these students that have to learn independently and don't have that so so based on that we did some research I did some research and uh, we took a look at uh, at what other school divisions were doing. And we took a look at some of the recommendations from post-secondaries and industries. Oh, look at that typo. I'm sorry, that's better. Uh, and industries, and we came up with eight essential digital skills uh, that we figure, and there are way more. There are lists that are 20, there are lists that are four. We sort of identified eight of these. And we posted on the learning services um, Web page here. So, so if you haven't seen, and I did it again, here we go. Sorry, guys. I will share with you this so that you can follow along on your own if you want. I so you don't have to kind of track with me. And if you ever want to go back to it later, and I'll also share the uh, shortened version of the the Bitly of uh, the Learning Services uh, website there if you want to take a look at it. There's tons of stuff on here, tons of different things that you want to take a look at and everything like that. Uh, but essentially in the digital citizenship and skills, we identified those eight skills inside of here. Part of it is all of our kids should be able to demonstrate this. Part of it as well is in order for our kids to demonstrate all this, we want our teachers and our staff to be able to also demonstrate all this and kind of go beyond the ability to create a PowerPoint or to Google something and pull down some values uh, or pull down pictures and stuff like that and copy and paste and, and whatever we are doing with it. Not that none of those are not valid. We just kind of want to take it one step further. So, so those are the eight. And what I kind of wanted to do was walk through about four of them. And I, I think the four that I wanna walk through, I'm gonna leave some of them alone and I'm gonna reorganize them. I put terminology a little bit farther down. Uh, I'll talk about that or, or really briefly. I have some suggestions on how you can incorporate that so you know it, it works with your kids. Um, using the internet efficiently, I'm gonna skip that one. That one to me is a little bit more digital citizenship. We're gonna get into some of our, our media literacy uh, and whatnot when we start talking about that and how to effectively search. We can spend a ton of time on how to effectively search and use the advanced search features in Google. Content creation is where I'm probably gonna spend the majority of my time on various platforms. Uh, I will talk about why. Effective communication and collaboration skills. Um, <laughs> I think that we all have seen that that is absolutely vital at this time. 
And I have a feeling in the fall, it's not going to get any easier for us. Uh, in fact, as I was making notes for this, I sort of identified that now we're gonna have potentially, potentially, I don't know what it looks like, but potentially we would have half of our kids in our classroom and they are you know, going to have their needs. Then we have our other half of our kids that aren't in our classroom, but we still wanna make sure that their needs are being met. We don't necessarily wanna teach everything twice or teach to these kids when they're here and these kids are far and then you know do it twice so we are going to be doing twice and it's it's really going to be an interesting situation when we start talking about communication and you know making sure our message has gotten across but then also our students are able to communicate with us and i would argue go one step further we're going to have some families that don't want to send their kids to school i think we'll have some families that are you know afraid scared whatever you want to call being cautious and they won't want their kids in school so we're going to have some of our kids that are 100 percent out of the classroom Again, I have no insight on this, but I have a feeling. So social media skills, we're gonna skip that one. That one to me comes along with using the internet efficiently. Uh, and I focus a little bit more on the evaluating truth than I do on the creating. Um, coding skills and data analytics, we've kind of looked at some of the opportunities for that in the past little bit here. Uh, there's some webinars on coding. Data analytics, I'm not gonna get into that. It's not, I would say, a K to 12 sort of analysis type thing. It's much, much simpler with our little guys and we're gonna get much deeper, I hope, with our older ones. And then understanding copyright and plagiarism, that one's not gonna go away. Hopefully I'll be able to spin that a little bit different than maybe we've seen it before, but that one we're gonna talk to, so. Um, so here's my suggestions. And this is all they are. And please, if anybody has something that they're using, throw it in the chat room uh, and or in the chat window there, and we'll, we'll bring it up and everything, or if you, you wanna chime in on it. With regards to content creation, we see, oh, so here's, I'll go off script. Um, when we made the switch from Microsoft to Google, everybody was happy, life was good no big issues. There were some you know, concerns and stuff like that. When we started pushing uh, Chromebooks into our student spaces, there was a little bit of grumblings, but essentially every school got more devices. That was a better situation. People were happy. The minute we started replacing, um, and actually even, let's go one step further. We gave all of our teaching staff a Chromebook, gave them, sorry, all of our teaching staff were provided with a Chromebook for use to get used to it, to get going. Everybody was still happy. I know that some of them are potentially, hopefully not, but potentially still in boxes under the desk, but nobody was upset. The minute we made the move to take Windows desktops away and replace them with Chrome desktops so that the ability to go back was not there, there was a lot of issues and a lot of concerns. And in fact, we got a little bit of pushback uh, at the central office. I wasn't a part of that, but the senior administration got a little bit of pushback from the ATA with that saying, you can't do this. This is not right. This is not correct. And as I reflected back on it, and part of that, we came up, we opened up Office 365 for our teaching staff and stuff like that. So we, there has been some responses to that. And hopefully we're working towards making sure that we're seamlessly. But part of that for me is we were very good at using one platform. We were very good at using Microsoft Word. And Microsoft Word is a very, very strong platform. It does a lot more than just word processing and everything, but we were very good at that. Or Smart Notebook, we were very good at that. And you know, I was there as well and, and we were told, start doing this, this is the future. This is where we're gonna be forever. Uh, and now it's not there anymore for whatever reasons. We can have that discussion at another point as well if you want. But I think where we're at now is we see that we can't rely on a single platform and we can't rely on platforms that we can't get our stuff out of that are very, you know, specific and, and lock you in and try and get you in there. And, and I, we try and avoid that. And, and some people might say we're doing that with Google Docs. I want to make the argument we can export from Google Docs, uh, maybe not smoothly, maybe not cleanly, but we can get it out of Google. We can get it into another platform if need be. So so I think that that. I'm kind of moving beyond the, the single stage thing. And, and you are gonna hear me talk a lot about G Suite and making use of G Suite and digging into G Suite. But my hope is that we get away from teaching the clicks and we get into teaching the creation. And if we teach our kids to create and to document and to write and to do that, uh, they might need a day or two to adjust to a different platform and they may not be as comfortable with it, but they will have the foundations for creation and then they'll be able to apply that to the various platforms they are. And I will actually use one more example from Alberta on this one. Alberta Education's uh, new Quest A Plus 
will be coming out this fall and it will be available for people to use. So um, there will be test exams and stuff like that on there. But essentially, we may put our students in a situation when they come to their grade nine, well, grade six, nine and 12 uh, provincial exams where they need to write that exam on a platform that they only see once a year. And it's not Google Docs and it's not Microsoft Word. And how do they know how to type in there and work through that? So, so what we need to do is we need them to teach them the skills and stuff like that. That's going to get also down into terminology here when we start talking about vocabulary, but teach them those skills on how to create no matter what platform they are. So, so for me, think big picture. That's what I mean by that. Think about what we really want our kids to do, not necessarily what tool we want them to learn. We're going to have to teach them the tool. And that's where we get into the, the, uh, the right-hand side of this. So, so um, plan the tools you want students to use collaboratively. And by that, I don't mean have the students working collaboratively. I mean that co plan them collaboratively with your peers. Look horizontally and vertical. Look across your grade groups and you know vertically throughout your grade groups and say, well, what tools do we have these kids using? If I'm using you know paint and somebody else is using drawing and somebody else is using this because that's our favorite or because we have a really great assignment that uses that, our students need to learn three different skills as they get to a specific point, right? If we can sort of shrink that down, especially early on, into maybe one tool that works really well and we plan that horizontally across a grade group and then maybe vertically one or two grades above or below uh, we can get our kids to dig a little deeper right and i think by keeping those options limiting and diving a little bit deeper into those options we can take advantage of what's there so in selecting tools i am going to suggest that we try and keep as much as we can in g suite but the only reason I suggest that is so that we're not jumping from one to another all the time. There are brilliant tools out there that I think are important to take a look at uh, and, and are very good, but try and use the ones that we have as deep as possible. Um, I, I like this idea of play first with purpose and then build to show learning. I think we, we try a lot of times, we have an idea set up, we give our kids the opportunity to try something and then we go, oh my God, they, they couldn't figure this out. Oh, no, 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 forget that, throwing that one out, we're going on to something else, right? Or a friend of ours, a colleague of ours gives us a lesson plan and says, this works wonderfully, you'll be able to do it. We take a look at it and go, no way, my kids can't do this. Um, and if we give it to them, we, we cut out a lot of the skills. And I think what we need to do is give them an opportunity to play quickly uh, with purpose, not just you know go chaotic and do things. And we've seen that as well and then get back into it and, and get them then to use it to demonstrate their learning. So um, to me, I think this will help. I think that this will work well if we can do that. I do want to, uh, I'm gonna bring over another one here and I know that this is gonna be a little bit tough to see. This is the, uh, this is the admin panel for Google and, and you don't need to worry about that. We're not, we're not gonna expect you to get into this, but I do wanna show you um, all of the G Suite products, and hopefully you can see this, all the G Suite products that are available to you to start making use of in your classroom. So I, it, classroom, yes, we're using Drive and Docs, most likely, I, I have no doubt that we're using that. Gmail's in there. Uh, we get down into, oh, I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit here, sorry. We get down into Meet, I think where a lot of us are using Meet and Chat and stuff like that. But uh, you know, consider looking at how we can use, say, Jamboard and the, the digital whiteboard. What is that gonna look like in our class? Uh, keep and tasks are two that I use a lot. I don't know that I would be using those a ton with my students, but also Google Sites. What can we do with Google Sites and how can we take advantage of that um, moving forward there? There are other products that Google, sub or sorry, that Palliser subscribes to um, that, that are available for you. But I just, I want you to try and think here first and then like I said, move off somewhere else. And, and I sort of feel like in some ways I just contradicted myself because I said, don't get platform agnostic, but it's, it's hard when you're jumping around all the time, so. All right, so content creation, perfect. Effective communication skills. Um, this one, I think that we struggle with this uh, as adults we struggle with this as kids and we worry with when working with our kids and we we sometimes push this a little hard i remember when video conferencing first came out with the polycom units and stuff like that uh, i remember sitting and uh, our principal at the time went into his office 
and we were in the staff room, we had our polycom unit set up because we were gonna have our, our meeting by video conferencing. And it was the the worst push I've ever seen to make use of that. It was, you know, pushing the technology for technology's sake and not for any other sake. So um and then it, it sucked. It was horrible. And we threw it out because it was not effective, but it was pushed into the wrong place. So Here's my suggestions here. And I, I, I'm sure that these are no different than what you're doing already. Have norms. We do that in our classroom. We have rules. We have things that we always stick to. Uh, raise your hand to go to the bathroom, line up nicely, all of those bits. Um, have those in the classroom. The difficulty is, is that we can't manage by our presence. We have to manage in another way. So somehow, how do we establish those? And, and how do we hold kids accountable um, to, to maintaining those? Oops, again, typo, sorry. Uh, stick with it. Please don't throw it out the first time. I know, I know that you guys are doing a wonderful job. I hear great things from uh, from administrators and from from our senior men on, on what's happening in our schools. And I think that I think that the situation we were thrown into and what you did was wonderful. So this one I should almost just stick with it, should almost be eliminated. Um, I think that we need to look at moving forward, especially if we're in a blended environment where some of our kids are here and some of our kids are not here, is how can we take advantage of these collaborative sessions to connect our kids from afar with our kids locally, keep them small and keep them short? How can we, how can we promote collaboration amongst our students by keeping those sessions short, get them to go off and do some work and then maybe come back later? We use this partially with our, uh, our time in our tech team um when we'll have a longer meeting sometimes we do have longer meetings we have staff that are uh, up in calgary and stuff like that we'll break it up into little sections where sometimes we leave that that room open the entire time but we're off working on two or three different projects then we bring those back together at a specific time to reconnect that room is open all the time if somebody needs to jump in and have that communication but we also move away from it so although it is a long session if we record it beginning to end in actuality, we break it up into a bunch of smaller, shorter sessions. So the kids are then working and not sitting and listening. So, all right. Um, <laughs> understanding copyright and plagiarism. I eliminated the plagiarism because I feel like that's where we focus on. We focus on plagiarism and the copy and pasting, and we sort of ignore the copyright because that's tough, right? Uh, and I'm not saying we completely do it, but I was there as well, and I broke this rule as well, this law as well. Uh, unfortunately, I think that every single school division, every single one that I've talked to, I would argue, in Alberta, is right now in the middle of a copyright uh, lawsuit with some of the big publishers. And you guys could probably heard of this from some of your colleagues in other divisions, but we were talking to... Uh, to one school division and one of their teachers actually had two years worth of lesson plans seconded or not seconded but uh what's the word i'm looking for requested uh from the uh, legal parties from the other end and they wanted to see you know these school divisions are just getting these massive requests for data and i think it's it's overwhelming but it's the way that the uh the publishers are putting down their foot so if it's not important to you it's not important to them uh, if it's not important to them, it's not important to you. Sorry. Um, I think if, if we make a conscious effort with our students to, to demonstrate copyright and stuff like that uh, in very, very simple ways, I think that they will respect that. And uh, I think that we can hold them accountable to that. I want to bring your attention back to our learning services page. All of these pictures, all of these guys, we, I didn't do any of them, are from a website called Unsplash. Unsplash is a free page, uh, is, is free content that we can use. The one thing that they ask, I would not, sorry. The one thing that they ask is that we make sure that you just give credit where credit is due. So if you take a look at any of the pictures, I try to very easily just put a little image in there directly to Michaela Lee's um, site and stuff like that. So. It's, a, it's a not a difficult thing to do, but it's an easy way. We do, I don't think we have to do, you know, MLA format or something like that. I know that we need to do that in other places where we give that, but I think just giving credit is all we're expecting our kids to do. So as I was saying with regards to this, I don't know that I would give this to my students to start searching. Um, I would, I would try and assist them in finding other ones, and there are other ones on here. And the reason I say that is because it is not filtered. Uh, if you do uh, a search for, you know, artsy nudes, you are going to find some 
naked people. And, uh, and so just to be aware, uh, we need to, we need to watch that and stuff like that. So I wouldn't necessarily share this site in particular, but what we do see with students a lot of times is using the insert, you know, insert image, and then they do the Google search on the side and they search up whatever it is, cows, and they just grab it and pull it over and drop it in, right? And and then they move on to the next one. And I think we need to be careful with that. I think we we need to teach them that that may be not the best way. It is very easy and it is convenient to be there. But we also need to just put in the little you know credit from here or something like that. So I think to me, I don't, I don't want to belabor this point, but uh, that's that's kind of my big take home with that one. And I, I hope uh, I hope it is true with a few people. So. And then finally, terminology, like I said, we're only going to touch on four of these. I think that terminology is important, and I think it's important that we sometimes use the proper words. But if we don't use the proper words, we stay descriptive and consistent in what we do. So I'm going to bring up uh, my classroom page, and, and I know that I've talked to a lot of you about this. In, in your Google Classroom, this is the easiest one. Up here, we got the waffle. Right, it's actually called the Google Launcher. I always call it the waffle, and I do that whenever I talk to students and whenever I talk to teachers and stuff like this. I don't know why, uh, but that's what I go with. And I find by the end, by the time I'm done a training session, an hour long one, if I say the waffle, people know where to look for the waffle, right? Uh, this guy over here, I call the hamburger. I call it the hamburger just because it's three lines, right? And then it also keeps with my little food thing. So as we start going through, if we say by the end, Go to the hamburger, people are gonna go like, oh yeah, yeah, hamburger, right? And they're gonna know where they're at, right? By default, the three little dots then become the hot dog. I have no reason to say why I would call that the hot dog, aside from it's not as big as a hamburger. So that is kind of where I go there. And again, sticking with those. Those are not the official terms for it, um, but sticking with those. The other one I have heard, and we'll bring this up, is this share icon. Uh, somebody and I, I haven't I don't have a real need to use that so much but somebody told me one time and I'm gonna bring this in that they call that the corn dog just because there's a stick shoved in a hot dog right so so they call that one the corn dog and and everything like that so I think that when we look at planning for these skills if we're using the right terminology and we're being as descriptive as possible our kids we're going to be able to interact with them from afar because a lot of times when I'm in the classrooms, I will see kids struggling to do something and a learning assistant or a teacher wants to keep the lesson going on track and they will jump in really quickly and grab that mouse and take over. And unfortunately, our kids don't necessarily know at that point what to do when they run into that situation again. And, and I know, and that's, you know, there's a catch 22. We want our kids to be learning not focused on technology. And so we have an activity where we want them to learn this, but they can't get there because of that. So it's easiest for me to shortcut them to there, right? And I think our shortcuts are kind of sometimes detrimental to what we're actually trying to establish. I think, and this is very difficult, but standing back, putting your hand behind your back and trying to walk the student through it is gonna be much more effective. And I, I know that our teachers are doing that now with the screen shares and asking people to do something. Um, and even though we do have the Chrome remote desktop that you can take over, and I have done this, you know, jumped into this icon up here and you can take over a student or a student device, they give you access to it. And uh, if you haven't seen that one, there is a webinar on that one. Um, and, and you take it over and you do everything to get them set up and then use your hands off, but it's kind of like that mom who was controlling the screen, so. Also screen captures and drawings uh, to make visuals. Uh, and by that, I mean Google Drawings. You can screen capture on a Chromebook really easily. If you do the control and the button up top that is the square with two lines beside it, I believe, hold on, I'm gonna step away for a second. On a Windows keyboard, that's F5. Um, so I, if, you, uh, if you do that, control button and then that, it will do a screenshot of your entire screen. If you have multiples, it'll capture each one separately. If you do control shift and that, it will give you a mini one. So you can then capture a small portion of your screen. So control shift and that, that button, the square one with the two lines, it will allow you to frame up something 
Um, so you can do that. So you can grab some of these icons and grab some of this information really quickly to make those screen captures, to make those posters around your room so that you start to talk to kids about the different pieces that you're using. So um, I have uh, one more here to go through. So, uh, and this was just kind of my, my closing thoughts. Here's my deep thoughts. <laughs> I don't have many, so bear with me on this one. Is it possible for students to arrive at the same place, but to take a different path? I think that I mean, I'm hoping that I guided you into that and we're all going to say, yes, it, it is, right? And, and how will we know when our students are there? Um, it's not necessarily that they're done step one and step two and waiting for step three, but they've demonstrated their learning for us. And, and so I think when we start talking about these digital skills, and again, I'm focusing on the digital ones, not saying that that's the only way we have to accomplish this, but in the event that we need to start producing stuff digitally, this is what we want to do. I've also seen my sons uh, do all of their work on paper, take a picture with their with the iPad and uh, send it to their teacher that way, right? And I go, you know, we could use like a word processor and they're like, yeah, no, that's okay. So, I mean, the idea is that they figured it out. They took a different path and got to the exact same place that it accomplished what they needed. So, um, I hope that that, I don't know if I gave you anything. Like I said, this was this was the one that I was most nervous on of all of these um and so i was i don't know if you got what you wanted out of it i i hope you did um i will show you i want to show you one more thing here this is uh if you want to screen capture that or there, there will be a recording here and i can add that if you are using a windows keyboard and you don't have the little mouses but you're on a chrome box uh these are the the buttons so the one that i was looking at right above the f5 right here is that little square with two lines and that one's the one that you can do uh to screen capture there so so i'm a little bit early but i'm okay if uh if you want to take off uh i as always i'll stick around and i will answer questions if you have anything or you have anything you want to share i will uh, i'll stop recording here and and you can go can you show me Google Drawings? No. Yes, I can. Absolutely. It is. Uh, do you do you want to do that right now? Let's see, Eric. Okay, sure. We can yeah. we can definitely do that. So, I'm going to stop recording.